I am deeply concerned that the proposed methanol refinery targets the town of Kalama with additional pollution burdens when it already struggles with its unfortunate location near the freeway, high unemployment and poverty, higher than average cancer rates, and coal and oil trains that already come through. The Port of Kalama and Kellett's County are deliberately downplaying the harmful impacts while at the same time using unproven assumptions to justify their support for a refinery that betrays their constituents. Once again, profits for a foreign company are being put over the health, safety, and well-being of all residents, all for short-term gains for just a few. Carbon emission estimates in the DSEIS rely on a 100-year average, which actually minimizes the full impact of this refinery. Most of the damage done by frack methane gas is in the first 20 years. Methane is 86 times stronger of a heat-trapping gas than CO2 over a 20-year period. The DSEIS even states the plan for the methanol refinery to exist for 30 to 40 years, so spreading the GHG emissions over a century is a blatant misrepresentation. We don't have 100 years to decarbonize. I'm a young adult, and I want to plan for my future. It's literally impossible for me to do that if I don't even know that this planet will be livable by the time I retire. How am I supposed to plan my life if I can't be certain that the climate will be sustainable for human life? The DSEIS for this project either ignores or downplays multiple comprehensive studies finding significantly higher leakage rates and global warming potentials for methane. As a lifelong resident of this community and member of two local construction unions that will be on this project, as well as over 19 years experience in the petroleum gas pipeline industry, I can assure you that I have as much financial interest as nearly any other local resident to see that this project goes ahead. But outside of money, not one other thing about this project makes sense. I really hope the good people of this community can come together and see through the gaslighting. You see, this is equivalent to my neighbor saying, hey, I need you to dump some of this poison in your drinking well because mine is getting horribly toxic from making all this cheap plastic that we've been enjoying so much. I've had the good fortune to work with many of the would-be potential construction and possible permanent employees that would be hired by Northwest Innovation Works. And I can tell you that they are some of the hardest working, most dedicated and intelligent men and women I've ever met. So make no mistake, they will find work. The claim of net reduction in greenhouse gas emissions relies on this idea that the methanol will be used to feed the chemical industry. In fact, if the price of oil is higher than $80 to $100 a barrel, that may be the case. But when oil drops below $80 a barrel, the traditional method for making olefins in China is the cheapest and preferred method. Since we're just over $50 a barrel now, I think there's almost no chance that any of this product will be used to offset coal. Many times tonight we have heard that the main reason for this project is so the Chinese can turn off coal-fired plants. Yet, in September of 2018, the BBC and The Guardian did analysis of satellite images of China. And what they found is that China had been building hundreds of new cold fire plants, and they have taken plants that were offline back online. So the appetite in China for coal is growing. It's not only growing in their own home country. Indeed, from reports from the National Geographic from last year, we learned that China is financing and building hundreds of new coal-fired plants in Africa. Two major climate reports were released recently, both with dire warnings. If we don't make rapid and drastic changes to almost every aspect of our society, then we face catastrophic destabilizing consequences that are irreversible within human time spans. And just how long do we have to accomplish that? Well, according to the world's leading climate scientists, we've got less than 12 years to cut our dependence on fossil fuels in half and less than 30 years to end that dependence altogether. So let's see, what have we been discussing here tonight? That's right, a new 50-year fossil fuel infrastructure project that would dramatically ratchet up our state's dependence on fracked fossil gas, which leaks polluting methane all the way along the supply chain. Prosperity doesn't look like massive stranded fossil fuel assets that leave communities in the lurch. It doesn't look like communities that are hitching their economic futures to dying fossil fuel industry. 
It doesn't look like selling off our abundant natural resources, our clean water and clean electricity, so that foreign countries can make cheap disposable plastics that poison our environment. That's not prosperity. That's madness.